Now, one of the problems that we have with terminal services is that there's so many settings that we can configure. There's settings that we can configure on the client, there's settings that we can configure on the server, there's settings we can configure on the gateway, there's settings that we can set on the session manager, and it becomes very, very difficult to make sure that we plan all this stuff out and that we are monitoring it appropriately. So the good news is, is that we have the ability to go through and manage this stuff via a group policy. A group policy makes it nice because I don't have to go and manage these things server by server by server. Instead, I can go in and I can apply a group policy at the site level, at the domain level, at a uh, organizational unit level, drop the machines in there, and then all the settings are going to be inherited. So, you know, one-stop shopping, single point of administration, all of that. But if you've ever dealt with group policies, it is vital it is vital that you do a lot of planning. You need to make sure that you have your group policy set up properly so that when you go through and you, you configure all this stuff, you know exactly what's going to happen. You also need to make sure that if you're going to be doing this, not at the domain level, but at the OU level, you document all of these group policies in great detail. Because if I move a terminal server from one OU to another, the policies may vary the, the expected outcome, and all of a sudden people can gain access to stuff that they really shouldn't be able to gain access to. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to do this. We have some generic settings, so I'm going to go out to my machine here, and we'll go back into the Group Policy Management Console. I think I may have closed that. So we'll just go ahead and fire it off again. Administrative Tools, Group Policy Management, and we're going to modify our engineering group policy. So I'll say edit. And this is under policies, administration templates, uh, Windows components, and then we have our remote desktop. Let me maximize this. And we have our remote desktop services. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to go in and you also have this under um, user configuration as well. Administrative templates, Windows component terminal services. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to get into the various uh, components here under terminal services. We're going to get into our connections. So say our connection host, connections host, we go into connections here. And these are some of our various settings. The first one that we have is automatic reconnection. What automatic reconnection is going to do is it's going to say, if you happen to lose connectivity to your system, are we going to allow it to reconnect? If it's temporarily lost, we'll go ahead and allow this to come back in. And this allows you to do it. Now, what's going to happen is, is if you happen to lose your connection, it's going to immediately try to reconnect. And it's going to reconnect every five seconds. Hey, let's try it, let's try it, let's try it, let's try it. But after 20 times, it's going to give up. <laughs> so it's going to try and connect every five seconds until it tries 20 times, and then it's going to go ahead and, uh, and drop off. We also have our Keep Alive. What our Keep Alive does is it says, how do I know that you're still there? You know, it's sort of like if you're a Monty Python machine, it's the machine that goes ping. It lets you know that your session is still alive. Um, and this is going to put it in a keep alive interval. It's going to check you can go from 1 to 999,999. That is your keep alive interval. Um, let's go ahead and look over on page 126. We have rules for the remote control of a user session. Uh, what remote control does is I can come in as an administrator and I can shadow your session. This is really, really good if you happen to have a uh, a help desk environment where you want people to be able to come in and look at what people are doing and help them along or maybe just find out what it is that they're doing. But what if you run into an environment where the stuff is kind of confidential and you don't, you know, maybe HR database or something like that, and you don't even want administrators or help desk people to be able to shadow the session. That is why it's so important to set these uh, policies up organizational unit by organizational unit because I can set the HROU so that shadowing is not allowed. No, nope, not allowed in there. We can go ahead and turn that off. So let me show you, again, the setting here. You have a couple of different levels. You can say no remote control period, full control user permission, full control without a user's permission. We call that the ghost in the shell setting. 
because what I can do is I can be shadowing your session and move your mouse and you'll be like, ah, who moved my mouse? Yeah. View a session with users, view a session without users. Notice the difference between use and control. If I'm just setting view, I can watch, but I can't touch. That is particularly important if uh, we're not going to allow these folks to go in and start to manipulate it. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good with view session, usually with user's permission. Um, the only time I do uh, without user's permission is, um, let's say that I'm in an educational environment and I have uh, students and I want to see what the students are doing and I don't want them to close the stuff off without me knowing about it so I can go ahead and say full control without users or view session. The problem with full control is your mouse kind of becomes active and your keyboard becomes active and it's a little bit of a hassle and uh, you know it can be a bit of a pain. So let me go ahead and kill that. We also have restrict terminal services user to a remote session. Let me show you this. That means they get a single session. You can't log in to 20 different machines at the same time and have multiple sessions consuming multiple blocks of memory. You are limited to just one concurrent connection, period. And one concurrent is kind of an oxymoron. How can you have more than, how can it be concurrent if you only have one? But you're only limited to one. Um, let's talk about remote session environment. This is actually done under the uh, both the user and the computer configuration and in your book they say that if it's set in the user configuration and the, co the computer configuration that computer configuration takes precedence. Um, it depends. It depends. If you have the policy set at in the same group policy with computer and user configuration, yes computer configuration takes priority. But if I have one group policy set that is on the OU with the computer and I have another group policy that's set in the OU that has the user account, it's a different user account, remember how group policies are applied. The first thing that's applied is the computer policy because that's when the computer boots up. The second thing that's applied is the user policy because that's when the user logs on. So if you have two separate policies, the user policies take precedence unless you're using what's called loopback processing which says when somebody logs in you can either merge the policies but the computer policies take precedence or you can completely ignore the user policies and it's just the computer policies that take precedence. Take our Active Directory class um, and uh, you'll be able to um, you'll be able to learn all about the uh, different group policies. So let's go ahead and hop back in here. We have limit the maximum uh, depth that we have uh, this is our color depth, this is our environment, so our remote desktop environment. Here's our session environment. Maximum color depth, uh, don't get rid, of the, get rid of the desktop, maximum display, how many monitors can we have. Here's one, the disconnect option. Why would I want to disable the disconnect option? The reason that you disable the disconnect option is because we don't want people leaving the terminal server and having their stuff still in memory and if that's what you want to do. Realize that if you remove the disconnect option, uh, what's going to happen is, is that the user has an option. I mean, they can just pull the plug and, or close the window or something like that, and it will disconnect them. It's just that they're not going to have that option on the start menu. So, you know, they're, they're not going to be able to have that in a shutdown or, or something like that. Uh, there's also different things like security, different compressions, start a program, always show the desktop on connection. Maybe you don't want to do this, maybe you want to just show the application. Desktop composition and then uh, font smoothing. Remember that font smoothing is very, very processor intensive on the terminal server. Um, and you may want to actually shut some of those things down. Um, let me show you this one. Terminal services, terminal server, this is under profiles. Let me go into profiles. When you're dealing with profiles, what we're talking about here is your desktop. You know, you have your desktop, you have your home folder, you have your stuff. Uh, and this can be used for your regular desktop machine or your laptop machine, but it can also apply when you're dealing with terminal services. You can have a separate profile for your terminal services. So I can say, well, if you're using a roaming user profile, that means it's centrally stored on a server. We have the ability to go through and we can say, hey, um, we want this to be below a certain size. So if you're you know, like me and you're a pack rat 
and you're storing just tons and tons of stuff, maybe what you want to do is you want to limit that down. I can enable it, and then I can say the maximum size. Notice that by default, that uh, our maximum size is 600 gig. <laughs> That's pretty big, especially if I happen to have multiple terminal service clients. You know, 600 gig here, 600 gig there. That's where it is. You can also say that we want to use a particular home directory, and this will be separate from the home directory that we have uh, configured inside of our uh, user settings. We also have mandatory user profiles. What a mandatory user profile means is that when you exit, we are not going to save your user profile back up to the server. So if you make changes to your desktop, you add this, you add that, you change your mouse, you do all that other stuff inside a terminal server, when you exit, we're not going to retain that. Mandatory user profiles, in my opinion, are a good thing, especially if you have shared desktops. Uh, the reason that I like them is it gives you a unified desktop. You know, uh, a lot of folks say, well, it's my computer, I can configure it however I want. And if that's your company culture, hey, more power to you. The problem that I have is, is if everybody is modifying everything, it becomes a service nightmare because as the uh, tech shows up to repair something, now they got to deal with all this goofy things that stuff has, has changed. You also have to worry about um, custom background, stuff like that, especially if you're dealing with HR problems. Hey, you have a, uh, a harassing work environment, something like that. Well, we're just going to have a, a standard corporate desktop policy, and now a lot of these potential lawsuits are going to go away. Um, so, I mean, you can go ahead and, and make changes to these things if you want. But I, I'm a big fan of mandatory profiles. Um, something that I'm not a big fan of, and maybe you will, this is under session time limits. We're going to do this, terminal services session time limits. Um, you can say a time limit for disconnected, uh, active but idle. In other words, you are connected, but you're, you're not really doing anything. And maximum for uh, remote desktops and say, hey, what do we do in the time limits there? And when do we do log ons and log offs, log on times and log off times? Um, here's, the, here's the gotcha on these things. You need to make sure that these are communicated to your clients, to your customers. Because if you just arbitrarily go in and start to set some of these limits, especially limits that will disconnect people when time's up, um, you're going to have to make sure that this is supported from above. Because otherwise, what's going to happen is they're going to go run into their manager, and their manager is going to come down on you if you just arbitrarily do this. So you need to make sure that this is supported from, from top down. Um, the first one that we have is setting a time limit for a disconnected session. You need to be very, very cautious about setting this because when you turn it on and you say end a disconnected session, you know, after two hours, when you end that session, any data that was stored in that session, anything, any applications that was running, they just get terminated. All that memory just gets flushed. So, um, you know, if you are going to set this, set it for a fairly decent value. And again, it depends upon the loading of your terminal server. If your terminal server is already overloaded, you may want to drop this down. But this gives them two hours to come back in. Maybe they've lost internet connectivity. Uh, and, and again, it really depends upon what server they're going through. And this is where you can get into the TS caps and TS wraps. You can say, look, if you're coming in to the, via the internet, we know that the internet is not as reliable. So what we're going to do is we're going to point you to terminal servers that is in a special OU that has a longer in disconnected session time. It's going to be longer. If you have to be connecting inside our local subnet, and this is where you'd have like maybe a site policy, something like that. What we're going to do is, is we're going to end disconnected sessions after 20 minutes. Because we figure by 20 minutes the network should be back up and running. You just wandered off or something and uh, we're going to get rid of it. But again, the big point here is, is notify your users. Let them know. Don't make this any type of a surprise because you're going to hear, ooh, I've lost a million dollar sale because my stuff went away. So make sure that everybody involved in this is aware of any type of time limits or restrictions that you're going through in setting. Uh, active but idle, um, that just means, hey, it's, it's idle, you, you, you're connected up, but we're not really sending any mouse buttons. Um, what's going to happen if you configure this? By default, it's going to give them a warning, a two-minute warning. 
that says, hey, within the next two minutes, if you don't move the mouse or hit the keyboard, we're going to go ahead and disconnect you. So, uh, so just be aware of that. Um, active session where it's not idle, you can put a maximum limit on that. Um, maybe uh, you're, you're uh, using this as an information kiosk. And inside of this information kiosk, we have a lot of people that want to gain access to it. Um, what I can do is I can say you have a 15 minute limit. You're coming in, you're doing queries, you're trying to find out, hey, you know, what college classes are available or what books are on catalog or something like that. We're going to set a 15 minute limit. It's going to kick you off and then the next person can come up. It sort of reminds me back when I was in boot camp and it was time to call home. Everybody was lined up. And uh, they said, you know, once you hang up, that's it, because we're watching you. And if all of a sudden we see that go up there, you're done. We don't care if, you know, you misdialed or something, dial carefully. Kind of draconian, <laughs> but hey, you know, when you have 5,000 people waiting to make that phone call or a whole bunch of people trying to get onto this catalog, maybe that's something that you have to do. But again, please make sure that this is supported from above. Make sure that this limitations are communicated with to the users, otherwise they're going to be uh, upset. Terminate a session when a time limit is reached. Um, otherwise, what's going to happen is, is it's just going to give them a warning. They're not going to be able to log on again or something like that. So just be aware. And then we also have a time limit uh, for log off on remote app sessions. When you're dealing with a remote app session, um, if I close the app, what's going to happen is the session's going to be disconnected. So if I, I had that calculator app and I close it, that's going to be disconnected. And what I can do is, is um, I can go ahead and say, nope, we're just going to go ahead and terminate it. So we'll, we'll go ahead and pop that out. Um, let's see. Done that, done that, done that. Talked about that. Let's go ahead and talk about, this is in the, uh, the session broker policies. So we'll go ahead and bring up some of these. And they, they actually have a whole bunch of, I mean, there's all sorts of policies. Printer redirection, are we going to be able to do that? There's a whole bunch of these on page 129 that you can look at if you'd like. Um, we have printer redirection. We have remote desktop connections. Are we going to use IP redirection? What is the broker server name? Uh, are we going to do load balancing? We have that. Um, we have our security settings. What type of authentication are we going to set? What's our encryption level? I mean, there's just tons and tons of different settings that we have here. Temp folders, do I delete them or do I not delete them? Client redirection. So if you are managing multiple remote desktop servers, it may be an idea for you to go in and check out what these, um, what these different settings are. So it can make, uh, can make life a little bit easier for you.